Yeah, and to Tom's point, um, it does, all of those other interactions that she's having with the other people in the neighborhood, she is never able to commit herself to um, this thing that she really wants, which is to go and meet this guy. But she's able to have other people commit to the things that they need to commit to or, you know, get in touch with the things that they want. So with her father, for example, he spends the whole time, you know, not being able to commit to go to do anything that's outside of his own heart. And the whole idea with the gnomes is, you know, to try and break him out of that shell and get him to, you know, get to it, really. So I thought it was interesting how she was able to be that for other people, but not really, you know, take it on for herself until the very end. And it required somebody else to do that for her. I thought that was an interesting kind of... Um, I suppose that's very real because you know you can recommend you can advise other people to do a certain thing and not be able to do that thing yourself so i thought that was kind of interesting the way they played with that idea and i feel like those subplot characterizations um they kind of fueled that that kind of um dilemma i suppose mm. did you guys find that um because it is obviously, without stating the obvious, that it's a French language film, that it is so kind of overtly French and it plays into our, um, I guess, idealistic or sometimes romanticised view of what Paris is. Absolutely. That, that, it, that, it, that, it lent, that it lent the whole film quite a nice uh, undertone. Do you, uh, do you feel that was a factor in our enjoyment of the film, the fact that it was kind of French language and it does play to these kind of... Um, preconceived ideas of the romantic values of Paris. I think it's something like it quite self-aware in that respect. Like it, it, it knew that it was kind of over-dramatizing certain elements and kind of embodying that quintessential French tone. Um, and it was playing that to its own effect. Like I, I feel like in, on very many occasions it was, it was drawing attention to that, um, that aspect of itself, you know, that, it, 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 I suppose it knew that it was whimsical and romantic and um, at times, you know, towards the end of the film when um, when it becomes a little more real again, when it isn't so easy uh, for, for the character, it's kind, it kind of plays with that and all the shots become a lot like straighter and the music kind of wipes out and it's just a lot more kind of conventional. Mm. And then when there are scenes that are a lot more romantic and fantastical, um, the camera is like letting you know that that's the case. So I feel like that self-awareness um, played pretty well. Guy, right, what did you think of it? I think it certainly softened its approach uh, to the to the audience. Um, it makes the audience feel really cosy, and it but it, it, it accepts it's 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 like that for a purpose and it's openly accepts that and i think the fact that it embraces that is what makes it so good um it doesn't take itself too seriously but in the process it does it's a, it's a serious product but that doesn't take itself too seriously and that's a combination that can really work you can do it really well and do it the right way um of course to make that work you need the right you need the right actors to play the right kind of characters the script it needs to be written really well um, I mean, as the story goes itself, it's not the most complex story, but it's still got the undertones of, you know, it, she, she's a brilliant heroine, but there's not actually a villain. I suppose the villain in it is her uh, lack of willpower or her, her own social anxieties. Um, that's the only villain in the storyline itself. Um, there's not actually an antagonist as such. And when you're writing a script like that... Yeah, but he's not an antagonist, is he? He's, he's, he's just a nasty he's, character. Yeah. He's just a nasty he's character. Yeah, he's antagonising and he gets his comeuppance. But there's no, an, there's no antagonist actually like manipulating the story as such. There's no antagonist to her. There's no apart one from her who own, deliberately antagonises Emily throughout Apart she from her own anxieties. Only worst enemy. Yeah. That's... That is it. Yeah, but what did we think of that as a whole? Is that you know, do, do do you need to? Is this evidence that you don't need to have a character that is anywhere near a villain? Or I think there was enough there was enough conflict in the film that made it interesting between mm. just each of the party. It doesn't have to be flat out war. It's just little things between each of the characters. Mm -hmm. The interactions between the father and the son, grocers, or all the the people in the cafe type thing. You don't need to have that. That overriding evil force which they overcome in the end it's, it's just sort of 
enough to keep it interesting between all the characters that are genuine conversations that you can relate with. And it's that that goes hand in hand with what Tom's saying about you know all the you know it being so French. It, it works. Yeah, I, I think going back to that, yeah, that two things clash. So French, it, it's a it's a really difficult film to to get right because it could have been quite easy to do an overtly French film like that in French. You know, have the cyclists going along every morning with the baguette, and it just be a bit tacky. And it was it completely avoided that somehow. It, it wasn't in any way tacky, uh, and it was. Well, they just kept it vibrant and interesting, and, and at no point were you thinking this is all a bit cliche or anything like that, because it was there were so many unique things to that film, like like the introduction, like the way they, they did the characters. It was it, it was very very unique on a on an overdone um, sort of French idea and, and style. Um, the, it could have come across tacky, but it, it didn't in any way. So what I thought was really good as well was actually the length of the film. I think we've watched two films recently that have been quite bloated and had unnecessary scenes and had a lot of filler and fat in the in the um, in in the prose and the verse and and everything. Um, and I was just re- reading up a bit about the the director and he and his background is all short film. He's only made a couple of of, of le- at length features. Um, and I think you can you can really see that kind of expertise in this, um, in in the, the time spent on each character development, as we we've, we've touched on before, um, the 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 interchange between the scenes and the general pacing without being too quick, it still manages to tie the full plot together. And I I, I think I think that is also kind of part of the enjoyment. You, you felt like you were moving at adequate pace. I know this is something you always bring up, guy pacing. What do you think? I think like exactly like you say, it's almost like you could you could dissect this film down into a series of short films. You got you've got the romantic relationship between Nino, Amelie, and the photo booth, the 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 the, the pictures of the man, the photo booth. You've got the uh, the old man painting and uh, oh, I can't remember his name now. That the the young the young grocer, uh, the young grocer, and then you've got all everything that's going on in the cafe and the romantic relationships there. And you could almost break all of those down into their own little short short films, and they've all, they've all been stitched together. Um, and pacing as a whole, when it's filmed that way, for me, it's just a dream to watch. Um, it's so easy and so enjoyable. Um, and the the length of it is is great when it runs at that sort of consistent flow like you say no, also, there's no, it's not it bloated required, with anything that like, slows sorry, it down sorry to interrupt you for a minute. go no go on. I was just gonna say, I was just gonna say it also requires like certain real command of craft to be able to do that like, to, it, like it had a really wonderful way of, of holding all of the different narrative sub threads like in place the, like the subplot with the calf the, the couple in the cafe and then the dad with the gnomes just when, just when you might be thinking like what happened to them or where, where are they? They like pop, they pop back in again. Like just to the points when you're thinking that you might be forgetting about it, it comes back and like re-enters just at the right time. So I just feel like that's a, that's the sign of a very well structured film to be able to like know when to um, hold something back and then reintroduce it again. Like when the camp, when the audience might be needing it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, he won a lot of awards actually for for his short films in France. Um, seemed like he's very kind of f- focused on the French industry and hadn't really branched out much. It, it it almost seems, looking at his track record, that this was somewhat of a fluke with regards to his international success. Apparently, for French cinema, it's the 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 la- uh, the best international um, or the most successful international French language film has been. Um, yeah, just which, to be the epitome which is of French quite interesting. <laughs> Pardon. Which, and it also happens to be the epitome of French culture for, for like foreign This is what in. I mean. It, it may have, that that may have played into, into part of its success on an international level. Um, because, yeah, I guess foreign language films tend to alienate a, a portion of the uh, viewership. But France is the most visited tourist destination in the world, especially from the Western world. So I guess that that, uh, that overtly French feeling it probably played a part in its international success uh, as we've said it already played a part in our enjoyment of the film um, so potentially why it, it managed to travel so well yeah I mean it did exceptionally well at a lot of film festivals uh, nominated for a load of Oscars uh, BAFTAs loads of different awards um, 
didn't didn't win an Academy Award, but especially given two thousand and one for a foreign film to be nominated for, I think it was maybe four or five or six Academy Awards. Uh, it's an exceptional achievement. Um, now, nowadays, maybe not so much, but especially back in two thousand and one. Uh, that's a huge achievement. It did win uh, at on some of the other, uh, some of the other lot, uh, during festival season. Uh, not the Academy Awards, but a lot of the other ones. Um, Cesar's, I think. Yeah, French, it did. Um, and it, I think it's Time Out Films' sixth best French film ever. Um, I mean, personally, for me, I can only think of uh, maybe. Um, well, I, 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 out of all the, I've watched quite a lot of French films, and probably uh, Clio from Five to Seven by Agnes Varda. That's probably the the best one I've ever seen, and I'd say this probably tops that as well. And that's an exceptional when did City, film. When did City of God come out? Don't know. Anyone know? That 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 I always hold is the the, the pinnacle of a foreign language film for me. Yeah, I, I, that, I, think I would guess about the same time as this. City uh, of yeah, God, I think it was early noughties. I'm not sure if that that's it's too bad. Or maybe that's just because board. when we became when we became sort of reticent of the wire yeah. <laughs> of, of films and, and could potentially remember them from. But I'm not sure if there was released uh, worldwide in 2003 foreign language movies at that that point in time. But I always hold that that up on a pedestal with regards to foreign language films. I've met me. I've met the director of that film, Tom Fernando Meirelles. Have you, Fernando Meirelles? Oh, Unbelievable. Got got to ask him some questions about the two popes which is the film he released last year yeah yeah hopkins and price unbelievable film yeah. nominated for us uh, nominated for best picture that was yeah yeah that's uh, brilliant I've got, I've got a question for like well the, the four of you um so obviously we've established that it was like a big international success and all that if you could pick three things three aspects of the film um to say why you think it was such a success what would they be so you can pick anything you can pick you know dialogue camera work acting fucking uh, set design costume design any of the above or anything outside the box too james would you james general james oh, oh, I, I think i think the main one for me is is, is relatability you've got i think it unless you're after exclusively an action film, I can't see anybody who wouldn't enjoy that film because yeah, it's got a little bit of humour. It's well, at its heart, it's, it's a romance, but it's not a it's not a rom com to the point where it would turn off people that don't like watching rom coms. And um, I think I think it can just appeal to such a wide. I don't know. I don't know what it's rated because obviously there's, there's a, a bit of there's a bit Highly. of sex and, and stuff like that. Um, so Highly. well, no, no, it's, it's in. Um, like if it, I, I, was it a fifteen or something like that, which you know can sometimes hamper. Oh, um, I imagine success. it's a but, um, twelve A. It, I, I just think it, it, it it's mass appeal because it, it's just so relatable. Yeah. Um, so there's this it's such a broad audience that it'd be able to capture. Um, 